What is the best way to qualify through FNCS weeks this season? I will be answering this question along with many more in this video, so I hope you guys stick around until the end. Really quickly, remember that for every one supporter on Code Sonata YT, 100 V-Bucks will be added to the 10,000 subscriber giveaway prize. It's a really good way to support me. Alright, let's hop into it. So first off, I need to stress the fact that you guys do need the right teammates to play with. This is a fact that I've gone over in previous videos in the past, but having the right teammates is absolutely critical to your competitive performance. You need to find teammates that you have a personal bond with that you're able to joke around with and play seriously with. Those are the three most important traits that you should be looking for. If you guys want to learn how to find trio teammates, please consider watching the video in the top right corner, but you need to acknowledge that it will take a lot of time. You also need to understand the fact that it's going to take a lot of time to find the right teammates. You might go through 15, 20, 50, or 100 trios before you find the correct people. You can go through countless options before you find the right people, and once you do, you're definitely going to perform. I'm going to quickly give an example of one of my close personal friends and his story of trying to find a trio recently. So if you guys don't know, last season I did trio with somebody named Gavo, and because I'm not able to play competitive this season, Gavo has been looking for a trio and asking me for advice on how to find one. He's been going through insane amounts of trios over the weeks, and he's been telling me about all of them. And it's taken him a very long time to find the correct people. And he's been complaining about how he doesn't want to take the time to find all of these people, and the fact that he just wants to come back to playing competitive with the same people that he's been playing with for a while. But obviously since I'm unable to play, he can't really do that. And I've been giving him the advice to stay patient and be persistent when it comes to finding the right people. It'll take a lot of time, but once you find those right people, you're going to succeed like crazy. There's been a bunch of competitive players that have popped off in the last year simply because they took their time in finding the correct teammates. Always remember that all you really need is one pop-off tournament before you're a recognizable comp player to most people. Another tip that I can give you guys is to understand the proper formats of FNCS. Now keep in mind that this format for FNCS has been the same as the last three seasons. The format has not changed at all, and it is important that you guys find out how to maximize points. If you guys have been playing competitive for any time in the past three seasons, you should know how to properly succeed with this format. But if you don't, you guys should realize that placement is king, and you shouldn't W key after your first three games. What you're going to want to do is watch YouTubers like Reese Hub, Destiny's Jesus. Some of my old videos are going to be really helpful for this. And as you watch more of these videos, you're going to learn how to correctly play for placement, but also succeed when it comes to properly popping off in these tournaments. You shouldn't really have your head wrapped around this idea of one pop-off game equals your qualification, and you should really focus on the consistency of your games. Always remember that in Trio FNCS, placement is king. Another thing that you should keep in mind is that there is only two FNCS weeks this season, and because there is only two, your chances to qualify have been a little bit more limited. So this season is going to be a lot harder to qualify in than the previous two. And if you want to pop off, you need to find teammates that you stick with. And if you want to qualify, you need to be persistent through these two weeks and really try your hardest. You can't just waste your time during the first week and then just try to magically qualify through the second week. That's just not the way it's going to be working. The way the format works is that it's really based off of how you perform in your first five games and then how you perform in your last two games. What you should do is have at most three throwaway games throughout the tournament because that's the way that the format is centered. If you can average a certain amount of points per game, that's the best way to properly play in this tournament. Another piece of understanding the tournament format, one that's really big as a matter of fact, is going to be consistency. Now consistency is a big topic for all competitive players that want to try and succeed. It's like I said before, you should never be caught up in the idea of one pop-off game, and you should focus on serious consistency throughout the tournament. Consistent play throughout tournaments is what's going to help you qualify. A bunch of people think that one pop-off game in one W key game where you drop 25 kills is one of the best ways to pop off and qualify, but that's really just not true. What you should do is talk to your teammates and have an honest discussion about setting a point average for all of your games. If you guys find out that qualification is 130 points, and you know that you have 3 throwaway games, what you should then do is divide 130 by 7, and then you should find out that the proper qualification that'll solidify you calling to the next round is going to be around 18 to 19 points. Now obviously if you're able to do that basic math, you should should be good. But if you're not, I don't know, maybe you need to go back to elementary school. As always, I'm just kidding. However, for some people, point averages won't necessarily work and it'll actually ruin their mentality during the tournament. After those throwaway games, you shouldn't let your team morale go down. If you're an IGL and you're watching this video, trying to help your trio qualify for FNCS, your mentality is extremely important and it's your job to keep the team morale high. I cannot describe how many times I see IGLs having really bad mentality and letting that rub off on their teammates. It's going to rub off on your fragger and your support fragger 
and then they're going to be really discouraged throughout the rest of the tournament. Please don't be like this and truly try to work on your mentality. Mentality is what's going to qualify you guys through the next round, and you shouldn't let that cloud your judgment. I always like to say it as if an IGL should act as an IGL that rotates you, but also an IGL that's a therapist for the team. If one of your teammates is mad at the other teammate, just try to fix the issue and move on. Play the tournament to the best of your ability and make sure your team is also doing that. That's the type of consistency that we want to see from an IGL. The type of consistency that you want to see from a fragger is more of fragging potential and storm surge consistency. If you're a fragger that can properly get storm surge and impact frags every single game, then you're a consistent fragger. That's what you want to see from a person who's trying to get eliminations in the game. Elimination points are big even though placement is king, and if you can get a lot of them, there's a higher chance of your team qualifying. And lastly, the consistency of a support fragger or a support player is definitely going to be to help the fragger frag and control the IGL's materials. That's what the support player has to be doing. If you're good at that and you're consistently helping out your IGL while helping your fragger eliminate people, you're a really good support fragger. Now the last topic of discussion that I want to go over for exactly how to qualify for FNCS is to Vodder view pros through the open rounds. Now really quickly before I get into it, I want you guys to acknowledge this. Remember that you are most likely not as good as these pros. You can't frag out and pop off with W key games like they do. And honestly, never be overconfident like that because if you don't perform to the standard that you want to, and you don't drop a 20 bomb every game, you're going to be really discouraged and your mentality is going to go down the drain. You want to VOD review yourself as well, looking for issues in fighting and rotating. This is coupled with the fact of VOD reviewing pros during fighting and rotating to get as good as them as a trio or team. But when you're VOD reviewing yourself, you want to make sure that you're looking for these specific issues and highlighting them with your trio. Never VOD review by yourself unless you take notes on it. And that brings me to my next point of taking notes on your VOD reviewing. I would recommend that you guys create a Google Doc that you share with all of your trio mates, and while you guys are VOD reviewing, you can all write down notes on there of what you need to do and what the team needs to do. That's my overall idea, and you should title the doc something like what we need to improve on. Also try to focus on keeping your comms good. That's one really important part of VOD reviewing. Maybe what you can do is record your game through OBS, and then rewatch it back afterwards and analyze the comms. I've gone over communications in other videos before, but I cannot stress it enough, it really does matter in modern day. And as long as you VOD review pros and yourself, as well as focusing on comms and note taking, you should be good in terms of VOD review. And that's going to help you a lot in terms of succeeding and qualifying for FNCS. Primarily past quarters, but maybe even into semis and finals. And who knows, you guys may get into heats and grand finals. Anyways guys, that is the video on exactly how to qualify through FNCS rounds this season. If you guys did enjoy, please consider dropping a like and subscribing to the channel down below. If you guys want to use code SonataYT or check out any of my socials, they are all in the description down below. But that's about it for this video guys, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye guys.